What's up, everyone? Welcome to the NBA Pick and Pod. Today, we're going to be talking about the Game 4 of the NBA Finals. My name is Dawson Shine, and I'm your host. So, before we begin, I just want to say I apologize for not having a Game 3 analysis video go up a couple days ago. The main problem with that was that I've been stuck doing IRL work and haven't been able to have time in order to make new videos and watch clips to make sure I know what I'm going to talk about. It does require quite a bit of effort, so I wasn't able to do it, and I apologize. But today, we're going to break down Game 4 and make up for the fact that there's no Game 3 videos. So to begin, let's just talk about what actually happened. The Golden State Warriors took a 3-1, to very commanding series lead by winning 108-97 to in Cleveland. Now, Cleveland in Game 3 came out on fire in the first half, going up by 20 in the first quarter, 33-13 to to begin with. And they utilized great defensive discipline in order to hold that lead for the rest of the game, winning by over 30 points, 120 to 90. They blew him out in Cleveland. Now, that was without Kevin Love due to concussion he received in Game 2. In this game, Game 4, he was actually cleared to play. So, Richard Jefferson started for Kevin Love in Game 3 and played extremely well in the starting role. But with Kevin Love returning to the lineup, Tyron Lue had to make the decision about whether to bench his all-star. He did. He actually started Richard Jefferson in Game 4 despite having Kevin Love available. He wanted to see if that spark Richard Jefferson provided in Game 3 would still be there in Game 4. And maybe Kevin Love would actually provide a great spark for the offensive end in the bench lineup, which was very important because the Cleveland Cavaliers have struggled all series with scoring with their bench. And they struggled to score again last night which is one of the reasons why they lost. Kevin Love was the only real good bench performer. He shot 3 for 6 and had 11 points. The rest of the bench shot a combined 1 for 7 for 4 points. Just absolute straight trash. But they were not able to overcome that straight trash of a bench because their starting lineup didn't do that great either. Now, Jerry Smith, 3 for 8, 10 points, not that good. Tristan Thompson had a fantastic game on the offensive rebounding end. He had six offensive rebounds, but only one defensive rebound. He had 10 points as well. Didn't do that good. And then Richard Jefferson only had three points. Of course, you do have Kyrie Irving and LeBron James, and they combined for 59 points. LeBron James was only one assist away from a triple-double, but it wasn't nearly enough to defeat the Golden State Warriors because they just played so much better on the offensive and defensive end, especially in the fourth quarter. This game was a two-point game going into the fourth quarter, but the Cavaliers' offense became so stagnant that at one point, with eight minutes gone by in the fourth quarter, they had scored seven points. That's ridiculously bad. The Golden State Warriors didn't do that great either to begin the fourth quarter, but they slowly scored more and more, pushing this lead to insurmountable odds. But how did the Golden State Warriors create those odds? How do they build this lead in the fourth quarter and take over this game? Well, I'm going to talk about that right now. First of all, they did it by having Steph Curry on their team, who shot 7 of 13 from three-point land and had 38 points in this game. Now, you may be wondering, well, of course, he's Steph Curry. He can do that. The main problem was that his shots were wide open a few times. The main problem with this being that he's Steph Curry and he will make them. Somehow. The Cavs got the idea that defensive discipline is actually not a good idea. Well, I mean, they're completely wrong, but they certainly tried to show that they were right. At one point, they actually had both guys switch onto Steph Curry after Draymond set a pick. Then, after they switched onto Steph Curry and he passed it to Draymond, both guys left Steph Curry wide open at the three-point line to go and rush to cover Draymond Green, who then passed it right back to Steph Curry for the open shot. Now, Steph didn't make that shot, but he was wide open, and it's very, very bad to leave him wide open, even giving him some sort of rhythm. And, unfortunately, that would go down as a good defensive possession for the Cavaliers. Not by anyone who has eyes and are watching, but in the stat book, you're going to look at that and say, oh wow, he didn't even shoot that good. He shot 11 for 25. The problem is, he was wide open on some of those shots that he missed. He just didn't make them. And that's frightening for the Cavaliers because he put up 38 points without making every shot that he really should have made. And that's not going to happen every game. 
as we saw last night, he actually can't erupt still. He didn't have a great first or second game, but 38 points last night really makes up for it. The Cavaliers did show a lot of difficulty with their pick and roll, mainly because they couldn't communicate well and figure out what the hell they wanted to do. I mean, I swear, every time they have pick and roll with Steph Curry as the ball handler, both Cavaliers defenders would do this sort of semi-switching where they would both kind of shade on Steph Curry, but the problem was, they wouldn't fully double team him, so he still has a wide open vision of the court. Then the other guy, who set the screen, is able to roll to the basket, or pop out for the, for the three point shot on the other side of the three point line. And Steph Curry would find the man, the two guys for the Cavaliers would have to try and recover, they'd miscommunicate, they'd get stuck in no man's land, the ball would get passed back to Steph Curry, or stay with the player who set the pick, and they'd take a shot and drill it. Or they'd miss it, but it'd still be open. And that's the problem. Giving up open shots for the pick and roll is extremely dangerous going against the Golden State Warriors lineup. Because, especially when they play small ball, they have so many three-point shooters in the team that will shoot at least league average. So you'd have players like Draymond Green wide open for threes. Which we remember from Game 2 is a bad decision when he had 28 points in that game. Now, last night he shot 2 for 9. He only had 9 points. But the thing was, those 9 points don't tell the whole story about how his shots are wide open. The Cavaliers played wide open defense and just allow players to get open off of an easy pick and roll because of undisciplined, uncommunicated defense. Then they're screwed in Game 5 and the series is over. The Cavs showed such focus and intensity in Game 3, playing fantastic on the defensive end, calling out their switches, playing aggressive up on their man, not unnecessarily double teaming, and not leaving guys wide open by rotating their defense whenever necessary. But in Game 4, they fell right back to what they did in Game 1 and Game 2. They showed no focus, they weren't rotating properly, they had their heads up there, you know, and... It led to a lot of backdoor cuts, wide open threes, and very poor defense on pick and rolls. That's not acceptable for an NBA Finals team. You can't be getting backdoor cut by Andre Iguodala three or four times a game. I mean, I saw a couple times in the fourth quarter, also, where Steph Curry would drive right by Kyrie Irving, just run around him, not drive, excuse me, he didn't have the ball. He went right by him. Got the ball right under the basket and then did a reverse layup and Kyrie Irving could not block it because he was under the net. That's what I'm talking about. Those plays right there where he just does a curl baseline, comes out to the to the right block, gets the ball and just reverse lays it in because Kyrie Irving was not aware enough to stop him from getting on that run through the paint is what cost the Cavaliers the game. If you're playing disciplined defense and not ball watching, when the ball is not in your man's hand, then you'd be aware that Steph Curry is trying to run there and you try and cut him off or rub him so he can't get to that spot. But instead, he did. And Kyrie Irving is going to look like he had a great game. He had 34 points. He shot pretty well, actually. 14 of 28. He had four assists. One turnover. But, in my opinion, he had an awful game. The defensive end, of course, we know he does not have good games. He didn't play really well at all. But I don't want to beat a dead horse. We already know Kyrie Irving cannot defend. He has his head in La La Land half of the game. And he gets backdoor cut on all the time. Never mind his pick and roll defense. Which was one of the reasons why they were having these semi switches and these shades to Steph Curry. But never fully double teamed. Because Kyrie Irving didn't know how to communicate that. Nope. None of that is what I'm going to talk about today. Because none of that is what really really got on my nerves in the fourth quarter of this game and that was isos dear god the cavaliers offense in the fourth quarter turned into an absolute crapshoot where they just could not run an offensive set for their life every time they went up the court they have a guy named lebron james on the team and in my opinion he's going to go down as one of the top five best players of all time i'm talking he's going up there with kareem with mj He's going up there with Magic Johnson, Will Chamberlain, Bill Russell. And LeBron has one of the best passing vision of all time. He makes some incredible passing. He has such a high basketball IQ. He knows when to drive, when to kick, when to try and score, and when to shoot. 
And you know what the Cavaliers' offense did in the fourth quarter of this game? They gave it to Kyrie, the 24-year-old, and let him go to work one-on-one every single offensive play. I, I don't know if anyone could hear me, but you probably could no matter where you are in the world. Because all I did every time he got the ball in the fourth quarter was say, Someone else move! Someone else move off ball! There was no off ball movement. It completely froze. And it was so frustrating to watch as a fan who loves to watch good basketball. Because all you're seeing is these one on one moves from Kyrie Irving to try and score. And then he would try and take a step back to brick it, or you try to drive all the way to the paint, and they wouldn't call the fouls because it's an NBA Finals game, and you can't expect every tic-tac foul to be called. Now, there was a few fouls that should have been called, but if you're depending on the whistle to try and stay alive in an NBA Finals game, you're screwed. And you know what the Cavaliers were? Screwed. For the first eight minutes of the fourth quarter, the Cavaliers' offensive game plan was, let's see what Kyrie can do against one-on-five. And it, the answer to that question, by the way, is not much, because he really couldn't. They would all key in on him. No other players, Jared Smith, LeBron James, Iman Shumpert, none of them were moving off the ball. They were just kind of standing around watching Kyrie Irving go to work, because everyone knows Kyrie Irving don't pass the ball. He took Uncle Drew's lines to heart too much. He would just do a bunch of dribble moves. He'd try to step back on players like Anderson Varejao, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, didn't matter who was on him. Or he'd try to drive right by them and hope he could get the lay-in. He never once looked like he was going to try and pass it out to the 3-3 three, three point line and just kick the ball for an open shot, despite the fact that the defense would collapse on him because they knew he wouldn't pass it outwards. That's the problem with being so singularly focused on scoring, because the defense knows that, and once they realize that, they're going to be able to play accordingly. They're going to guard you, they're going to double-team you and triple-team you whenever you go in the paint, and they're not going to worry about you kicking it out to the open three-point shot all the time. Now, you might do it one or two possessions in the game, but you need to play with basketball IQ that's higher than a snail all the time if you hope to actually beat the Warriors. And Kyrie Irving doesn't do that. He plays so stupid at times, and just so inefficiently that it hurts me physically. He really needed to actually give it to LeBron James and have LeBron facilitate the offense properly. Set some pick and rolls, have people doing backdoor cuts maybe, do a couple of backdoor screens so you can get someone open on a curl outside. But instead, they just had Kyrie Irving isos for so many offensive positions that went to waste. And despite the fact that he had a good game overall, that fourth quarter shows why the Cavaliers could not win this game. Now, if he had played off-ball, maybe, and had LeBron James handling it, and had them just go to work and try and score in a normal, efficient manner, then they probably would have won this game, or at least kept it much closer than an 11-point victory for the Warriors. But instead, they had Kyrie Irving dribbling the air out of the basketball, calling off pick-and-rolls, and trying to go one-on-one against the Warriors one of the best defensive teams in the entire NBA. And it didn't work, surprisingly enough, guys. I don't know if you would have called that one, but I think I saw it coming once I realized that they were going to run ISOs for the rest of the game. It was just frustrating to watch as someone who wanted to see a closer series because this is a game the Cavaliers could have stolen. The Warriors did not shoot well in the fourth quarter, but the Cavaliers were so unfocused and undisciplined on defensive end that they couldn't get in position and box out their men to get the defensive rebounds, which led to players like Andre Iguodala, Steph Curry, and Harrison Barnes getting offensive rebounds, when you really cannot allow that to happen. How do Steph Curry and Harrison Barnes get three offensive rebounds apiece? Well, they get those because you're not guarding your man close enough to box him out when the shot goes up, or you're too busy trying to recover from a drive to the paint, so you have three guys on one player and no one on the weak side to get the rebound once it goes over the basket which leads to offensive rebounds and extra possessions for the Warriors, over and over and over. And, on the offensive end, you run Kyrie Irving isolations for more than half of your possessions of the fourth quarter, and it doesn't work, actually. Surprisingly enough, isolation basketball against one of the best defensive teams, with a player who doesn't pass the ball regularly, is not a good idea. So the Cavaliers really didn't deserve to win this game by the way they played in the fourth quarter. 
They need to have much better focus in Game 5, or they are going to lose. Tyrone Lue needs to set an offensive game plan, utilize Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving off the ball, and have LeBron James handling it more often, facilitating the offense, and getting some off-ball action in order to win the game on the offensive end. And the players themselves need to regroup, refocus, and play tighter defense while communicating properly, knowing when to switch, when to stand their mans, when to double team, etc. They need to commit on defense. If they don't do that, the series ends in Oakland in the next game. But these are my opinions. I'd like to hear yours. So if you have any opinions about the game, let me know in the comments section. Also, like and subscribe to the video if you did enjoy. Thanks for listening, everyone, and have a great day.